All right, it is nine o'clock on Thursday, the 20th of May. And uh, my name is Father Doug Scharf at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. I'd like to welcome you this morning for our uh, daily time of praying morning prayer together. If you'd like to follow along, you can go to our virtual church website, goodshepvirtual.org, click on prayer and study, where you will find the Zoom, link, the Zoom link each day to join us, as well as the service leaflet that you can download. At the conclusion of our service, the recording of our time together will be posted on Facebook and our YouTube channel if you'd like to join us uh, later in the day and pray along with us. Let us begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ has entered not into a sanctuary made with hands, a copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ the Lord has ascended into heaven. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our invitatory canticle this morning, as we come towards the end of our Easter season, is the Pascha Nostrum, Christ our Passover, which we will say together in unison. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ the Lord has ascended into heaven. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 105, part one, which is comprised of verses one through 22. We will say the psalm in unison. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Pardon me. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant with Israel, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and sojourners in the land, wandering from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another. He let no one oppress them and rebuked kings for their sake, saying, do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm. 
Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar, until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from the prophet Ezekiel. As Ian has noted previously, the lectionary uh, for the daily office moves around a bit through the book of Ezekiel. You may recall, though, that when we started in the first chapter, Ezekiel is given a scroll to eat, and it's a difficult word, uh, but that represents the word that Ezekiel will speak to the exiles. And although the word is difficult and it calls the people to account, it ultimately is a word from the Lord that calls them to repentance, which we will hear at the conclusion of today's reading. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, why should not the son suffer for the iniquity of the father? When the son has done what is lawful and right and has been careful to observe all my statutes, he shall surely live. The person who sins shall die. A child shall not suffer for the iniquity of a parent, nor a parent suffer for the iniquity of a child. The righteousness of the righteous shall be his own and the wickedness of the wicked shall be his own. But if the wicked turn away from all their sins that they have committed and keep all my statutes and do what is lawful and right, they shall surely live, they shall not die. None of the transgressions that they have committed shall be remembered against them. For the righteousness that they have done, they shall live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn from their ways and live? But when the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity and do the same abominable things that the wicked do, shall they live? None of the righteous deeds that they have done shall be remembered, for the treachery of which they are guilty and the sin they have committed, committed they shall die. Yet you say the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed. They shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is, not, is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be, in, will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourselves a new heart 
and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament canticle this morning is the Song of Moses. Let us say it together in unison. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor has he drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. <clears throat> they sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you have brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson continues in the letter to the Hebrews, continuing to hear about the high priesthood of Jesus, and in particular, the way in which uh, the priesthood of Jesus, unlike the priesthood of those in the Old Covenant, uh, lasts forever. It is an eternal priesthood. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. <clears throat> there is on the one hand, the abrogation of an earlier commandment because it was weak and ineffectual for the law made nothing perfect. There is on the other hand, the introduction of a better hope through which we approach God. This was confirmed with an oath for others who became priests took their office without an oath but this one became a priest with an oath because of the one who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Accordingly, Jesus has also become the guarantee of a better covenant. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I just noticed that as I was reading that reading that um, um, this passage includes part of what I referenced in my sermon on Sunday about the tradition in the New Testament of Jesus as intercessor, one who prays for us. And we see this here. Um, he is able all time to save those who approach God since he always lives to make intercession for them. So just a helpful connection with our daily office readings this week. Our second canticle is glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, <clears throat> receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Oh, amen. Excuse me. <clears throat> Let us now affirm our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. We begin the praying of the collects this morning with the collects for the seventh Sunday of Easter, which of course is the Sunday that falls between Ascension Day and the Feast of Pentecost. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Today we commemorate um, Alcuin, a deacon and scholar and abbot of Tours in the ninth, early ninth century, um, actually late uh, eighth century. Um, let us pray. Almighty God, you raised up your servant Alcuin as a beacon of learning. Shine in our hearts, we pray, that we may also show forth your praise in our own generation. For you have called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
a colic for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our prayer for this week is a prayer for quiet confidence. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and particularly for those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering especially the Diocese of Bayamba, Rwanda, the Right Reverend Emmanuel Negendahayo Bishop. We pray also for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, and our Companion Diocese, remembering today especially the Diocese of Toliara, Madagascar. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray this morning for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering especially Becky and family, Patricia, Priscilla, Steve, Joey, Julia, Bob and Pam, Ashley, Mindy, Bernie, Peter, Joe, Sal and Colleen, Chris, Brooke and family, Jim and Jerry, Debbie, and Jay and family. We pray also today for our serve ministries, remembering especially our pastoral care team, that the members of Good Shepherd who are suffering or struggling may receive prayerful support from their fellow parishioners. And for the St. George's Dinner Ministry, that less fortunate individuals in the Northeast Corridor of Palm Beach County may know God's love while receiving a hot meal. A prayer for the parish. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your additional prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Welcome Sherry and Debbie. I ask your prayers this morning for our Good Shepherd School community as they Prepare to enter into their last week of school. One week from tomorrow is their last day of school here at Good Shepherds. We pray for our students and our teachers and administrators. Uh, this will also be uh, Dr. Rosemary Marshall's last week with us as head of school. She is retiring. And so um, we pray for her as she moves into the next phase of her life and ministry. Yes, Ian, we do pray this morning for our brothers and sisters and all those in the country of India who are suffering and battling the surge in COVID-19 infections in that country. We pray for healing and strength, wisdom and discernment. We especially pray for their leaders, for healthcare workers, for doctors and nurses, all those on the front lines of the pandemic in that country, that you would sustain them by your Holy Spirit give them strength to meet the days ahead. We pray for an increase in resources, especially vaccinations. 
and we pray for your healing to be with those who are sick. In Jesus' name. Joan, we do pray for Lori and Kelsey this morning. Pray for God's peace and strength to be with them, God's healing presence and deliverance, especially as they struggle. And we know, oh Lord, that you know their struggles and you know the battles that they are facing. But we also know, Lord, that the battle belongs to you. And so we pray for your presence and your grace and your love to be with them. And Sherry, we do give thanks this morning for all of the blessings that we receive every day. I am grateful for the blessing of you all who um, are faithful in prayer. Um, I, I would ask that you pray for our sister in Christ, uh, Nancy Scarpa. She has been a faithful attendee for much of this pandemic here for morning prayer. She is um, struggling and, and battling uh, her illness. And so we pray for strength and healing and wisdom for Nancy, for the doctors, her family, and for all who are providing care for her today. I give thanks this morning for our new assistant rector, uh, Derek Larson, who officially graduated from the Seminary of the Southwest with his Master of Divinity degree yesterday. So he is one step closer to his uh, ordination and the fulfilling of his calling to be a priest and one step closer to joining our community here at Good Shepherd. A prayer of Saint Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your tr truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Just a reminder that this coming Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. So we are in that period of time when Jesus told his disciples to wait, to wait until they were clothed with power from on high. And so as we await the renewal of the presence of the spirit in our lives, uh, let's pray for one another and um, give thanks for the gift of God's Holy Spirit. God bless you all, have a great day.